What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is all about the most important aspect of all our playing. It's not lead, it's rhythm guitar. So let's go. Cool. So like today's video title mentions, today is all about rhythm guitar, right? Um, I know on the channel, we talk a lot about the soloing when it comes to the music of the Grateful Dead. And I think a lot of the Grateful Dead guitar lessons on YouTube as well speak a lot about the soloing and not a lot about the rhythm or the comping, right, as we would say it. And believe it or not, I think... If you were jamming with somebody or you're playing, for example, in a Grateful Dead style band, more than you think, you'll be playing rhythm guitar as opposed to lead guitar. And rhythm guitar is equally or even more important than your soloing chops. Um, when I was at Berkeley, I think it was the fall 2016 semester, um, Steve Lukather came and did a little clinic in one of these little halls at Berkeley. And when talking about rhythm guitar, he essentially said, if you don't know how to play rhythm solid, you're essentially useless in the industry. Rhythm guitar has to be emphasized a lot and in context with the music of the Grateful Dead, there's a lot of cool things you can do to spice up the rhythm guitar playing so it's not just going through the motions, right? And what, I guess, separates the good from the great players is that the good players may be to able to solo nicely but have so-so rhythm where the great players right will be able to hold down a rhythm for how many verses and then equally be as confident with their soloing skills right and that personally is what i am aiming for right with all these videos practicing etc a master of your craft rhythm and lead playing so Today's video, we'll take a look at China Cat, right? A pretty simple song that we all know already. Um, the rhythm part, how we could sort of spice it up, and then the ultimate goal of being, let's play rhythm over a solo section. So let's go. So before we go into the playing portion, right, I really want to stress the equal importance with practicing, right, the constant listening of this music. The more you listen, and from personal experience as well, the more you're able to internalize the music and have really the best feeling of the music, right? You'll start to establish almost like your ideal version of a song, given that you're listening to 70s versions, 80s versions, early 90s versions, right? You'll internalize the rhythm playing, the connection between the whole band, right? Some of the small details that you get through active listening, right? And you'll sort of start to establish your ideal tempo, your ideal groove, Right, your ideal soloing ideas and techniques that you want to implement with these songs. So, along with the practicing, constant listening is key. So, with that being said, today we're looking at China Cat. And I'm all positive that we all already know how to play this, right? Especially this very G Mixolydian groove, right? Right, 
Right. Doing that groove of boom. You should be able to, right, hold that groove for really two minutes, internalize the groove, everything, be one with it, and sort of hold your like hold your spot with everything. And have that confidence to just say, I can stay here as long as you want. And the more confident you feel, some of those small nuances you can throw in, right? When I'm doing the boom, boom, boom. Or... Right, that little dyad... indicate that that G chord right and if you want I'm seeing myself on the camera right now, that stank face. Right, because stuff like that may just, is maybe what it takes to get your whole body into the groove. And when practicing a song like today, China Cat, I highly encourage you to have the lyrics in front of you while you're practicing, right? Because when you're practicing this whole rhythm guitar in the context of the Grateful Dead, ideally, you'd be able to want to play really any song top to bottom with no solo section, right? Even better, let's say you're doing a China Cat and comes a solo after the first verse, you should be able to ideally have the solo playing in your head and you play the rhythm, rhythm guitar and then go back to verse two, if that makes sense. At which point, when you feel confident playing a song talked about with no solos, then you could sort of add in the solo and then go back to rhythm guitar playing, right? So something like this. So let's take it from the verse. Here comes solo. Right. And so you could sort of establish your own comping idea, right? And keep it simple because calculate if you're doing that guitar player lead is doing all the solo sections. So you want to be able to do a comping rhythm that isn't getting in the way of the lead. 
right? And so the next level what you can do is you can say to yourself, I'm going to record a solo and loop the solo section, right? So in my head, I just play a lead line, have it looped. So when it comes to that part of the song, I can engage the looper and then just play rhythm on top of my pre-recorded solo. Let's check this out. Pretty cool, hey? One more time. back to the top. So again, our ultimate goal, not of the China Cat, but songs like Sugary, Althea, Deal, Terrapin, right? Some of those songs with the more chords, having a firm concept of the rhythm, the groove, the tempo, right? And not wanting to sort of show off your amazing rhythm chops, right? Have the confidence to play the minimum that still holds everything together. That's the goal. Building up your chops to have great rhythm playing and great lead playing, at which point you can basically join the Grateful Dead. <laughs> well, all right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.